This video is a little bit different. It's not like my regular adventure videos. I'm going to explore a feature in the Nikon D850 that's really, really powerful. And I've been looking for the perfect place to do this. Um, this feature is called Focus Shift. And I know not everybody likes to watch a video, so I've turned this entire video into an ebook that can be purchased at my website in the description below. It's not expensive. It's only going to be two bucks. So you can get that there. But let's go check out this Focus Shift feature. I've been looking for the perfect place to try out the focus shift feature of the D850 and I think I found it. Look right behind me. A huge field of sunflowers. That should be perfect. Just got to wait for the sun to come up. Okay, let's back up a second. What is focus shift and why would you want to use this feature? Focus shift does exactly what the name implies. It shifts or moves the plane of focus in your image. Here, let me show you exactly what I mean. Here's a shot of the sunflowers. Notice how only the first few feet of the flowers are in focus? That's because I focused on the flowers in the foreground. Every time you focus your camera on a specific subject, the camera creates an area of perfect focus from front to back. The aperture determines just how wide or narrow that plane of focus is. I can attempt to get the entire field in focus here by stopping down the aperture, but doing this restricts the amount of light coming into the camera. Not only would this make the image severely underexposed, but it would probably also compromise the sharpness and clarity. We don't want either one of those things. We could fix the exposure by lowering the shutter speed or increasing the ISO, but doing that could also introduce more problems. So how do you handle something like this? You could use a tilt shift lens, but I don't own one of those. So I'm going to use the focus shift feature of the D850. I'll choose my focus area in the foreground, recompose my shot to get the entire field, and then let the D850 shift or move the plane of focus for me. Watch how the plane of focus moves a little further back in each one of these images. This is exactly what I want, and the D850 does it all automatically. If everything works out, I can then take these images into Photoshop and have Photoshop stack them, and I'll get the entire field of sunflowers in perfect focus. All right, so let's head back to the D850 and set things up. I'm gonna use my two to five for this shot so I can get the entire field in that shot. And it looks like the sun is just starting to hit the back row. So I'm gonna go right up here on this hill and get up higher so I can get the entire field in one shot out there. And, oh, look, there goes a red tail hawk. Oh, he's coming right towards me. Bonus. Oh, wow, that was cool. I've got my shot composed, but I want to make sure my camera is level by using this handy built-in horizon indicator. While in live view, just keep pressing the info button until it's displayed. Now let's pull up the focus shift option in the menu. Press the menu button, and since I've already been doing this, the focus shift option is right there. It won't be like that for you on the first try. The focus shift option lives in the photo shooting menu, and you have to scroll down a little ways to access it. There it is. Just press to the right, and now we're in the focus shift menu. But what does all this stuff mean? Well, start is pretty obvious. That starts the whole process. Number of shots is the total number of shots you want the D850 to attempt to take. I say attempt because the number of shots isn't always going to be the same as what you've chosen. For instance, if you've chosen a narrow aperture which creates a wider depth of field, the D850 won't have to move the plane of focus too many times to cycle through the foreground to the background. The next setting, labeled focus stepped width, also has a direct impact on the number of shots it will take to cycle through the foreground to the background, so don't be alarmed if you set the camera for a specific number of shots but wind up getting less or finding out that you haven't actually chosen enough to get the entire shot in focus. You're going to have to experiment with these settings a little because you will be adjusting the plane of focus and there are several things that actually determine this. Your aperture, the focal length of the lens you are using, and the distance between you and your subject. My settings here most likely won't be of any use to you, but here's what I learned worked best in this situation. More images created better results, and choosing a smaller numerical value for the focus stepped width was better as well. So what does focus step width do? You get this handy numerical slider which ranges from one on the left to 10 on the right. Choosing one will only move the plane of focus a very small amount, and most likely won't work unless you've chosen to take a very large amount of shots. 
Choosing a focus step width of 10 is only going to generate a few images and most likely won't work either. You might have areas that are out of focus. Again, you're going to have to experiment with this to see how these settings work in your shooting scenario. Interval until next shot is exactly that. This tells the camera how long to wait until the next shot is taken. Choosing zero will take shots at about 5 frames per second if you're not in any of the quiet shooting modes. And this is perfect for when you're not working in a controlled environment like this. Exposure smoothing helps keep the exposure the same between shots. I highly suggest keeping this on. Silent photography is exactly that. If you choose on, the D850 will not make a sound. No shutter noise or no mirror slap between shots. Highly suggested for this type of photography. Starting storage folder lets you choose a different folder to store the images from the sequence. I don't use this feature. Instead, I just take a blurred out shot of the sky or the ground between each set. This lets me see when one series stops and another one begins. That's it. Once you have all your settings correct, just press start and let the D850 work its magic. Let's jump over to Photoshop and see if we can stack these images to get a shot where the entire field is in perfect focus. This is where things get easy. All right, so now we're in Photoshop and here's the version I'm using. I'm using Adobe Photoshop CC 2017.1.1 release. I'm gonna come over here and click File. I'm gonna come down to Scripts and I'm gonna click Load Files into Stack and I get this handy window here asking me where the files are located. So I'm gonna click on this Browse button and in this one, I only generated nine images. I chose a focus step width of six. So I'm gonna click the first one, hold down Shift and then come down here and click the last one and that'll select all of them. I'm gonna click OK. And now they're all listed here. I'm not gonna attempt to automatically align them because I shot on a tripod. I shouldn't need to do that at all. So I'm gonna click OK. And now Photoshop is gonna load each one of these images into its own layer over here in the Layers panel. If by chance you don't have the Layer panel open, you can come over here and click uh, there you go, layers, and it'll cycle them on and off. I want it on. This one is selected. I'm gonna hold down shift and click the last one to select every single one of them. There we go. I'm gonna come over here and click edit. And I'm gonna need auto blend layers. And I want stack images selected, not panorama, because I'm not making a panorama. And I want seamless tones and colors selected. And I'm gonna just click okay. And then Photoshop is gonna do its magic. In, in order to cut down on time, I'm going to cut this part of the video so you're not sitting here waiting for Photoshop to do all of this work. In any second now, the entire shot is going to be in focus. Wait for it. And there it is. Look at that. Every single one of these sunflowers from the front all the way to the back is now in focus. Here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and just check them out. Yeah, those look good. Scroll back a little bit. Yep, looks good there. All the way to the back. It takes a second to render some of them because it's going to be such a large file. There they are in the back. They look good. Even way back here, it looks pretty decent. And that's it. It's that simple. This is a cool shot, but I think I can do better. Um, let's see if we can do another one really quick. For this shot, I've tried something a little different. You can see I've got all the flowers here and good focus in the foreground, but I added some elements to the background. You've got this tractor with these hay bales. It's actually really cool looking. And if you zoom in here, you can actually see the sun rising on the reflection of the window there. So let's see if we can stack all of these and get the entire scene in focus. So I'm going to go over to File. I'm going to hit Scripts. And I'm going to choose Load Files into Stack. And I'm going to browse to where all of these are. And this time I got 30 images. I'm going to click that one, hold Shift, and then click this one. And it should get them all in here. There they all are. I'm going to hit OK. And now Photoshop is going to load each one of these images into its own layer. And it's going to take a little bit. So I'm going to cut that part out of the video. All right. Now each one of those images should be loaded into its own layer. Let's find the layer panel. And there it is. And yep, here they all are. I'm going to click the top one, hold Shift, and click the last one. And that will select the entire range. I'm going to go over to Edit, click Auto Blend Layers. Make sure stack is selected and seamless tones and colors and then click OK. And now Photoshop is going to do its work and it'll take probably about a minute to do this. So I'm going to cut this part out of the video. All right, Photoshop's almost done and there it is. All of these sunflowers from the foreground 
all the way to the background, the tractor, the hay bales, all that stuff should be in focus. Let me just close some of these windows that are cluttering up the space here. There we go. And then check out some of the image to make sure everything is getting sharp and focus. All the way to the back. Let's get the whole thing back on the screen. Check out some of the foreground. Looks good. And just scroll all the way through. Zoom in. Yep, everything looks pretty good. Even the hay bales. That is a cool shot and a really cool feature. So that was how you use Focus Shift and the results you can get. So just think about all the different places you could use this. Typically people use it like with macro photography, which is really powerful, but you could use it like for taking pictures of jewelry if you're a jeweler, watches, maybe if you sell items online and you, you're having trouble getting the entire thing in focus, you can use this. You can use it for landscapes. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. So as usual, click that thumbs up if you found this video uh, helpful. Share it, that's always helpful for me. And let me know what you thought of the video in the comments. And if you wanna get this video in book form, there's a link to that in the description below and there'll be a link to that coming up in just a second. And until next time, I'll see you later. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is the perfect time. Just click that subscribe button you see on the screen and check out my website for my workshop schedule and for all the books I've written. And thanks for watching.